Hello and welcome to Bit by Bit Leadership Conversation. I am ecstatic, even if I am really tired, to be with Michelle Johnson, who is the interim CEO of Intel. It's been a long time coming. I'm so, so excited yeah, to I'm have you. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Any time spent with you is time well spent. Oh, bless you. Thank you. Um, it, we are at Mobile World Congress. Yeah. We are in Europe. Uh, we were just chit-chatting before we start rolling yeah. about everything that uh, people are asking us about the current situation in the US. But let's leave that all aside. And I want to start with your role. You have two big roles that you're filling in at the moment. What are your key priorities for short term and then long term for Intel? I know that you're always very upfront about the work that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. um, and I really appreciate that because I think that with awareness comes a resolution. So uh, what are you thinking about right now? Yeah, I mean, I've spent a lot of time talking to customers, especially in this first 90 days, just really trying to understand that. So maybe I'll break it into two parts. We can start with Intel Foundry. Um, obviously building out this network of a Western supply chain, world-class technology foundries, um, you know, world-class nodes for our customers is important and remains important. But probably the shift that we've made is products are as important, if not more important, because as customer zero, for that foundry business, we really need to showcase and be able to highlight that technology. And I think we had kind of missed that in our communications and our spending. And so we've really tried to reprioritize the way we do things. We need world-class nodes. We want to be a manufacturer for the world, but first we need to be a great manufacturer for ourselves. Yes. And so that's been really focused on that. And I'm very excited about the progress we've made on 18A. And I do believe that's more of a journey than a destination. And when you look at it from an Intel product side, which is really just getting back to delivering world-class products for our customers in all the segments that we want to compete in. And so, you know, you have to be a little humble sometimes and you have to go and hear a lot of tough feedback about where you're meeting the mark and where you're not meeting the mark. And I really think it's different across the spectrum. And so, you know, in client, we continue to have a competitive product portfolio. There's more competitors than there's ever been before. But I think everybody feels good about the client space, the growth opportunities, the refresh that's to come. So for us really in 2025, it's about Panther Lake followed by Nova Lake um, in 20 the 26. And so I feel like we have a good product portfolio there and we just need to continue to focus and be competitive. On the networking or the edge side of things, which is what we're here to talk about exactly. this week, um, you know, we've got some great new products, particularly with the on 6P and E that customers are very excited about. I think what I've heard from customers this week is an open virtualized network is finally a reality. The TCO is here. All the things that we've all been investing in as this open ecosystem come to fruition. Yeah. And people are very excited about the opportunity, inference, AI, and the opportunity to make money again. And so I think there's a lot of enthusiasm. And you know we've got great market segment share position there. So I feel, I feel good. We're going to continue to make the investments we need to um, fine-tune that. Um, data center is really kind of the hill for me to go and climb. Um, you know, Xeon 6 is a definitely a good step in the right direction. It's certainly the best CPU for AI workloads. Um, but in a lot of other cases, we're behind competition. And, mm -hmm. you know, our competitors continue to tell us that. I don't think we were great listeners for a really long time. And so trying to listen, trying to evolve, we've got a good roadmap. So now it's really about increasing our say do ratio, making sure we're excellent in execution. And then we're pretty much non-existent in Accelerator AI. And we've got Gaudi 3, it starts this year. Um, we've got some good customer momentum, but as you know, software is as important as the yeah. hardware. And so this is really a learning journey and opportunity for us, followed by you know the work we'll do on Jaguar Shore. So at the end of the day it comes down to building world-class products and making sure we have the process technology and the nodes for customers to be able to manufacture with us. And there's lots of things to do in 2025 and all of those extend kind of over the next five year horizon. We're never done. I, well, yes, the industry is never yeah. done because technology is moving. Industry. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's why I've been doing what I've been doing for so long. What I love about you, and I told you before, is the fact that you, know, you mentioned the word humble, you mentioned listening. 
all of that doesn't take away from the fact that you have confidence in the products that you have, in yeah. the work that you're doing, and you're keeping your organization focused on that work. I think sometimes that um, is not understood uh, in, in uh, leadership, that yes. you can be humble and still deliver the goods and still um, be a... Yeah. I, I can't use that Humility word. Humility keeps I, us I, grounded. I, right? BA, but I can't yeah. say that. But anyway, um, silicon, you mentioned yeah. your products. There's yeah. never been as much diversity as we mm -hmm. have now, and there's more coming. coming. Yeah. <laughs> How do you see that from your competitive standpoint, but also from a value perspective to both enterprise and consumer alike in the PC market? Well, more competition breeds better products. So at the end of the day, I think competition is healthy. I've always been one that says competition makes us better. I mean, part of that humility is understanding that even if you're in a market lead position, you can be disrupted at yes. any time. I think we see that throughout, you know, tech history. And so for me, competition is about making sure you're listening to customers, you're really understanding market needs and that you're building a world-class roadmap that your customers can win with. And I think sometimes we get so excited about the technology that we're building that we forget how it's going to be used who's buying it, um, and why they want to buy why, it. And yeah, so, what problem are you solving? Yeah, what pro exactly. And, I, and I, I think AIPC is a great example of that, where I know AI at the edge and at the PC is going to come, but we have failed yet to really show a very compelling usage model that has the entire ecosystem moving mm -hmm. there. Um, and so I think that we're on that journey of building out the software ecosystem, et cetera. And so as I think about new market entrants, I think it makes us sharper, makes us smarter, hopefully makes us to be better listeners. And at the end of the day, execution is, is really yes. the story you have to tell. And so, as you can imagine, there's a lot of swirl around Intel. Um, and what I talk to my team about is, at the end of the day, customers don't buy a product, they buy a roadmap. Yes. They buy trust in you. They are betting their customers and their business on you. And so for us, it's about execution, building trust, and making sure that we're delivering things that make them successful. And historically, we've been able to do that better than the competitor. And so, but you have to deliver both to be the trusted, reliable partner while delivering world-class technology. And, you know, that's a good challenge to wake up to every day. Yeah. And I think that, um, not that I want to disagree with you because I would never do that. But um, as far as execution is concerned, yeah. you got way better, right? Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that in the past that has always been your strength. That's true. And I... I really think that you took people by surprise uh, with the AIPC yep. and landing your product in the way that you did last year um, and now your roadmap staying on track. So I think that that's definitely um, reassuring from a, a competitive advantage perspective. Thank you. you mentioned Edge and you mentioned now the uh, also network mm -hmm. and the uh, um, data center. I do think that you have that ability from an Intel perspective to do AI end to end. We hear everything is, is intelligent. Like you can't yeah. go on any booth without having smart or intelligent splatter everywhere. everywhere. How do you think about AI in that respect and you know, from the PC to the cloud? Yeah, you know what's so interesting about AI is a lot of people like to talk about AI as a platform, and I think about it as a series of workloads. It's really just a oh, lot of data. Yes. And so whether that debate data is computed today at the cloud, eventually it will be computed at the edge. And I think we the challenge for all of us is how do we build this network of hardware that's ubiquitous that allows people to move data from the cloud to the edge and from the edge to the cloud in a seamless, seamlessly, you know, and secure way. And I think mm -hmm. Because we do build platforms across that spectrum, we have a unique opportunity. Um, and it's, it's about being quick, it's about being nimble, it's about being secure, because this is people's own data. And so one of the things that's very interesting to me is, while everybody's talking about AI and talking about intelligence, people are very nervous yes. about it as well. I think particularly enterprises in the sense of, they want to be cutting edge, but you're going to get fired if you go too fast. <laughs> yes. And, you know, you might get a pat on the back if, if you are able to enable it more quickly than others. And so I think for us, it's along the journey of building that out, being able to talk about those pieces, being able to work with the software ecosystem to deliver that. And I think the one thing I'm sure of is that we will see compute from edge to cloud. Yes. I think 
at the beginning of this, we saw so much enthusiasm around this, you know, hyperscaler build out. And it was just this massive inflection of growth. And I think what people forgot was AI will become ubiquitous when it becomes cost effective and it's in the hands of everyone. And that's when it actually probably really delivers the magic that we're all hoping for. And so people, some people love DeepSeek, but some people don't. What I love about DeepSeek is it changed the conversation about affordability, availability, and breadth. And really, I think, reminded all of us that as things become more cost effective, more people use it. And so for me, it's about building that technology from edge to cloud and making sure that we can get it in the hands of everyone, but we do it in a smart and responsible way. Yeah, and responsible is, is a key word there. Yes. Um, but you know, you mentioned from an enterprise perspective, moving too fast and breaking things, obviously cost is yes. big. Huge. Uh, and the uncertainty of how much to invest because you don't versus know. versus later, yep. Exactly mm -hmm. right. So there's so many components that are remaining fluid because we just don't know yet how much we can do. Right with AI. But on that note, um, you had some recent announcements more on the data center side yeah. and the network side. Talk me through those and yeah. what they mean to you. Well, some really exciting developments with our Xeon 6 product family. And I mean, the best part about this family is it's power, for, power efficient. Um, total cost of ownership is better than it's ever been before. But we also have AI accelerators in every CPU core. And so as we see inference and things move, to the CPU, it is very well positioned. And when you think about it from a network perspective, from the security features we have, the performance and power capabilities we have, this platform is really ubiquitous across both of those platforms. And we see people very excited about what they can create. And as you and I were talking about, one of the things that's been so great to see at the conference is we've been talking about RAN and open RAN and mm -hmm. virtualized networks. And we've been talking about building out this infrastructure. And I think with these platforms, people actually see it. They say, okay, these are cost effective. They're open. They're all the things that we talked about. And now here's an opportunity to actually change the market from, you know, these very proprietary yeah. systems to this, you know, open um, ecosystem, which is one of the things that is kind of at in core to Intel's DNA. So I'm very excited to see I've watched the journey and now you can kind of see it come to fruition, which we don't always get to see that, but I'm excited about those products. I think we've got, you know, what we're hearing from customers is, you know, if you look at their old machines and as they do deployments, they, they can, re for every five machines they have, they can replace it with one. One. And yeah. you just think about the efficiency that we're able to drive. Um, the and in a lot of cases, cost. you know, yeah, depending on the workloads, et cetera, we're much better than competition. So. It isn't the perfect platform yet, but it is a great platform that I'm very excited about. And I think it helps us continue on that say-do ratio of, we told people we'd be in the market in 25, we're in the market with a good competitive platform, and we're on this journey to really lead again in this segment. So I'm excited about that. Have you actually made it out of the meeting room and walked the floor? Did you see anything excited? I have excited? walked the floor. Um, I think I'm overwhelmed at the... <laughs> the amount and size of some of these booths, but I've seen a lot of exciting things. I mean, I, I'm a little bit surprised at the number of robotics that yes, I've me seen. Too. I mean, they're like every booth has something. Some of them are kind of gadgety, but it's very clear to me that robotics seems like another big area. The level of technology that you see everywhere. I mean, full data centers in the middle of some of these booths has been absolutely fascinating. Um, there's AI PCs everywhere, obviously edge infrastructure everywhere. Um, I haven't gotten much out of my hall, which yes. is all kind of like, likes like. Um, but it makes me very excited about what the future has to hold because technology can do so much good when it's used in the right way. Absolutely. And so there's certainly a lot of innovation and investment there. And so now I think it's just about delivering on that promise. That's awesome. I'm gonna look forward to see what is next for you, hopefully. Right. So <laughs> your guess is as good okay. as mine as okay. to when okay. that announcement will come. <laughs> Thank you so much yeah. for sparing time today. Anytime. Good to see you.